Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button. I want to talk to you a little bit about my cherry tomatoes that I'm growing. These are my indeterminate cherry tomatoes, meaning they can grow up to the sky. Your determinate tomato plants are usually more bushier. They grow to maybe about four feet tall and you get your tomatoes all at once. Your indeterminate tomato plants, you produce tomatoes until it's you're ready to pull them out or till chill till the winter comes or you're just done with the plants. The reason why I have these cover, everybody knows about the infamous tomato tobacco corn they will decimate a tomato plant within two days. They can eat three times their weight in leaves and fruits. And I don't have time to be bothering with the tomato hornworms, going out in, in, at night with, the, with this particular type of flashlight, trying to find them because they camouflage very well. I am a very busy person. I don't share my crops. And so one of the ways that I keep the um, the, 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 the I, I, don't, I don't know what they're some type of a moth I don't know what type of moth but from laying their eggs underneath the leaves of my tomato plants is I keep them covered this one is awesome because all I have to do is just zip just untie it here and zip up the mesh covering and then this will allow me access to my tomato plant. So as you can see, my tomato plant is free of insects and free of pests. Now, one of the things that you could have a challenge with growing indeterminate tomato plants is you can let them grow until they can get eight, nine, 10 feet tall. But because I'm keeping my tomato plants covered, I have to keep them cut down. Secondly, I like to thin out my tomato plants so that they can start putting more energy into the fruit and less into the leaves. So I have already trimmed this one back. So as you can see, this one here got trimmed back. And I've got some, and I've already harvested about 20 tomato plants. As you can see, I've got red ones over here. So I'm gonna be harvesting those. So I've got some red ones here. And this is going to be a small harvest, but it's going to be my second harvest. But as you can see, I got so many green tomato plants right now. Got a bunch of them here, got a bunch here, got a bunch here. Unfortunately, the weather has gotten super, super hot in our zone 5B. And we're 5,200 feet above sea level and our sunlight is extremely intense so tomatoes are not going to ripen with temperatures above 90 degrees but thank goodness next week our temperatures are going to drop down to the 80s and i'm really happy about that because then i can see all these green tomatoes eventually starting to turn red when i do want to produce more tomatoes so that i can get these yellow flowers i will continue to let the tomatoes grow further up now this particular tomato here tomato plant oh and by the way this one is a cherry tomato something chrome I put a question mark there because I wasn't quite sure what that was but if you would follow me to this particular tomato plant this one is I don't know if I have this mark yes I do have it marked these are super sweet these are called the cherry tomato sun gold. And they are one of the sweetest tomatoes you can eat. This is called the sun gold. Mm. And you know what's oh, you know what's so great about growing your own food? I can pick these cherries right off my plant and I don't have to worry about insecticides pesticides I don't have to worry about washing them I don't have to worry about insects because I know they're safe to eat and I have already did my first harvest 
So I'm going to go ahead and prune this one back. One of the things you always want to do is you want to make sure that you're sterilizing your uh, tools, especially your pruners. So I'm going to go ahead and sterilize it with this Clorox all-purpose cleaner. You can also sterilize it with alcohol if you want, but you always want to make sure that you're keeping your pruner sterilized before you start pruning any of your crops. So as you can see, I have a lot of yellow flowers here which are going to be producing so many more tomatoes but it's pretty much at the height of my um, poles here so what I want to do is I want to start trimming back some of the leaves so that I can at least try to like th this particular case now I don't probably want to prune this back because I see the yellow flowers, but I am wanting to prune the side shoots here. The less foliage I have, or I should say the reduced foliage I have, would put less energy into the leaves and more energy into the actual fruit. And believe it or not, tomatoes are considered a fruit. So I'm just going to start cutting back. A lot of the leaves and the, these little these little uh, leaves right here that's coming right here in the section here you also want to keep those pruned back because they can actually produce more leaves but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this one off and or produce more stems I should say so I'm just gonna go along here like this and just try to cut back as much foliage as I can because I want to put all the energy into producing the fruit and now that we're getting cooler weather the fruit can also start turning orange. I want to eliminate, I want to eliminate the suckers so I'm just going to pinch that one off and as you can see there's another one coming. What that does it just keeps another stem from being produced so I just wanted to share that with you so as you're going through your tomato plants eliminating some of the foliage you also want to make sure you're eliminating those suckers so I'm gonna be looking for those suckers so I can eliminate them like there's a little one coming right there but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one this whole thing off so I'm gonna continue pruning this and don't worry about doing a hard prune on your tomato plants if you are getting a lot of the flowering like I'm doing here that means that your plant is going to be producing more fruit and right now you want to be just focusing on more fruits for your t um, tomato plant and less foliage So this is my first time pruning back the foliage on this particular tomato plant, which again is called the Cherry Tomato Sun Gold. And I started this from seed April 22nd. And these are probably one of the sweetest tomato plants, excuse me, one of the sweetest tomatoes fruit you can eat. I always try to get the bottom leaves from the plant. Go ahead and cut back as much of the foliage as possible so I can expose more of the fruit so they can start turning um, colors. This one I didn't cut back the foliage as much as I should but I can always go back and cut them um, as usual. As, 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 as it is needed. This is my second time cutting back the foliage. Now that I've got fruit being produced and I've got a lot of yellow flowers, which is gonna turn into tomatoes, I am feeling confident that now most of the energy is gonna be going toward the fruit and less toward the foliage. Now I'm gonna show you something else I'm gonna do because I do want the plant to grow a little higher so I ended up getting a taller pole. Let me go grab the pole. Go ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this pole in 
and you can see it's gonna it's giving me another four inches for me to um, have a little more covering height over the tomato plants so it doesn't just max out at um, six feet because this is probably about six feet right here I, I'll be able to get it to max out about six and a half feet and this is all the foliage that I cut back and again this is the second time that I have cut this foliage back again as an indeterminate tomato plant I can't allow it to grow as tall as I choose to but because I do keep my tomato plants covered to keep the gangster squirrels from eating them, the birds from eating them, and mostly the infamous tomato hornworm for devouring a tomato plant if you don't, if, if, there, if it's left unchecked. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover my plant again. These coverings are really a lifesaver. It makes gardening easy. Right. Like this. Okay. So I'm going to put the covering back over my plant. I grow most of my crops with the mesh covering. Unfortunately, we have the invasion of Japanese beetles, which has become notorious in our area. And so, there are many benefits to doing this. All of the new insects that are invading our environment, the other critters who wants to share your crops. If, if you have sacrificial crops and you want to share, fine, do that. But Unfortunately, I'm too busy to plant extras for the critters. In my case, rabbits, squirrels, insects, pests, Japanese beetles, caterpillars, tomato hornworms. So this is how it gets, I'm covering it. You can see it's fairly easy. Now, with this new pole, I'm able to allow a little more growth. And I probably will get another one over here. So I just zip the side of the mesh covering and I tie it at the bottom. I've been doing this for four years and it's truly been a pleasure to be able to come out, make this my crops, not have to worry about any damage to the crops. So just want to give you an update on my indeterminate tomato plants, two different varieties how I maintenance the plants to keep the insects and the pests, insects, pests, and critters from getting to my plants, how to have an easy, seamless way of growing tomato plants without all of the other challenges that comes with growing them. So I want to thank you for coming along with, uh, along with me on this journey and providing you an update. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.